Hey guys, uh, let me start by saying that I naturally have a high-pitched voice, so there will be some moments when my voice might go like this because I'm really nervous. And so sorry about that. Uh, let's start with the Telerik platform. From what I've seen at our Telerik booth, most of you haven't heard about us. For some reason, I don't know why, because we're so awesome. <laughs> uh, and what we actually do uh, is we provide a set of IDEs and services that let you develop hybrid apps easily, test them, and put them to production in a really short term. So what I will be doing today is a live demo of the Telerik platform and its browser-based IDE in particular, because we also have a Windows desktop application, uh, a Visual Studio plugin and a command line interface, which by the way is open source. And if I have a few minutes for it, I will show it as well. So platform.teleric.com is the address you need. And you can log in with any social provider or if you have a Teleric account like me, you can use it. Okay, <clears throat> it's really fast. Uh, what I am going to show you today, uh, once I get logged in, of course, is how you create uh, what we call an app, which is a container for projects for your mobile app. Uh, you can have various things inside from backend services to analytics to whatever, and your code, of course. Um, I will scaffold, oh boy, is it my Wi-Fi or something? Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing with live demos. You're always experiencing unexpected troubles. I will try and reconnect to the Wi-Fi if I can. Yeah, turn it on and off. It should work. Yeah. How do I keep forgetting that? <laughs> So, once I log in, if I can, of course, I think it's working. Um, come on, don't let me down right now. Um, what I'm going to show you is first our uh, scaffolding service, uh, Screen Builder, which lets you quickly scaffold apps, um, that is, add really basic views from your home view, a registration view. Oh boy, is the, is the platform down or something? Sorry about that, guys. It was working in the, uh, during the lunch. I have no idea. I can, obviously, I can, I can open everything, but apart from the platform. And I'm blushing right now, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, okay. Let's try this again. <sighs> this is like, I think, the worst moment <laughs> ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, I might need to go to the CLI and then straight. All right. Yay, it started. Okay, so let's create the app with my <laughs> last five minutes. So we're creating a hybrid app. We will be using Screen Builder and uh, we will create a new backend services project along with it. We will call it, of course, PG Day. Ugh. What I will do is uh, have a home view, 
uh, registration view and a sign-in view, and from what I'm seeing on my clock, I will need to uh, jump right into uh, our companion app and our simulator. Yeah, so this is Screen Builder. I hope, are you seeing it okay or should I zoom in? Zoom in a bit. Oh, that's a, bit, a little bit too much for me. That's okay. Uh, okay, so basically you get your app created with the home view and you get a handy simulator which shows you how your UI will, will look. Uh, you can choose between flat and native team. We'll stick to flat. Okay, that's the most I can do with the zooming in. Uh, so, I'm adding a register view. As you can see, it's got all the, uh, all the basic settings. You can choose whether to add into the nav navigation, choose its icon, and you can also set a data, data provider which will um, bind to your user's database. Uh, I will just create it with the default settings. Apply. Uh, and then I will go ahead and add another view. You probably can't see it, but it's added to my tab strip navigation as well. And this is how the basic registration view looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is a sign-in view, which again has some settings along with uh, the data provider I told you about, which again will connect you to your user database. Once you have those set up, you can choose to add sign-in links and to the sign-in page, and vice versa. Um, and of course, the sign-in. Right now, I won't be uh, connecting to a real back-end because this is something that uh, all of you will be doing tomorrow at the workshops, so no need to spoil your experience there. Once you're done scaffolding your app, uh, you can switch to your code and see what Screen Builder has already done for you. That is, open your project in App Builder. And I've got two minutes. Uh, okay, waiting. So this is the code editor. Uh, you can see your project structure here. This is your home view, you can see this is your code with the JavaScript and the HTML. This is all can do UI mobile based. So if you're familiar with it, this will be kind of easy for you. Uh, in App Builder, you can, of course, run your app in a simulator, much like the one you saw in Screen Builder, only this one uh, is way more sophisticated and does more stuff for you if it decides to la launch, of course. Uh, it's got some controls. It's got pretty good simulation of the basic uh, Apache Cordova APIs. Uh, and you can do most anything with it. Uh, it's way better to use it in a desktop client or in the CLI because um, it's got mo more options there and more support for uh, Cordova plugins. So the next thing I'm going to do is to show you how we actually test things the easy way without, uh, without deploying to the app stores, without getting involved in, a, um, in the Apple developer program, for example. That is, you can choose to build your app for the App Builder companion app. This simple operation produces a QR code which you can deploy on your device uh, with a QR code scanner. Um, here's a nifty trick that Brian taught me in the break. So, uh, once you get your App Builder app uh, on, let's see if I can, oops, so, We've got a basic app, the one I did. With a two-finger slide, you turn on the menu and you hit QR code. 
And in my case, scan the QR code. Come on. You get a photo boot. Come on. And here's my app on the device. I don't know if you can see it properly, probably not. You see a blank screen, and that's pretty much you should be seeing. Uh, I will be quick about it and show you how you can really quickly get updates to your code on your device. It's a matter of a single gesture. And I'll be wrapping up really quick. So, where did my foot boot go? Uh, I tap my three fingers on the device. I don't know if you're seeing something. You get a download package. No, it's not there. Uh, you get a downloading package and hey, there is on. I would really love to get this. Ah, hey! <laughs> So one more thing to, stay, to say here, because I'm doing overtime right now. Uh, one other thing that's worth mentioning is our integration with the uh, Telerik Plugins Marketplace, which is a really cool place containing a wide, wide collection with Cordova plugins. Uh, you can see them, how many there are here. There are lots and lots of Plugins, we do our best to keep them up to date and working in App Builder, and our response time on fixing bugs and issues with them is really quick. I've had our support team report that Eddie, uh, who is taking care of the plugins, has really great turnover, and he's really responsive, and we've had numerous customers who are ready with uh, how our support for the plugins goes. Guys, I'm, I've overdone my time. Thank you so much for your attention and your patience. And Excellent. This is what being fearless looks like. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yes. If you had used Firefox instead of Safari, it might have been easier. Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> I'm just saying... It probably was your colleagues in the office like, let's turn it off now and see how she fares, but you've done a really good job. So. <laughs> They're outside as well. If you have more questions for yeah, her, she'll be available with her colleagues as well for you. Now we've got a 30 minute break.